when you get into the word this deeply, brethren, the scripture really, the New Testament really comes alive. You know? mm -hmm. This word is so important to me that no matter what I'm going through, it's, it's secondary to this word. I can't let go of this word. And Brooke's testimony you know, never left me. And she said that's how she found out who I was the day that I had surgery on one eye and I was sitting there holding my eye and studying. That's how, that's how this word sustains me. That's how important this word is to me. Every problem that I have is secondary to this word. It is everything to me. It is my soul. And they don't have that. The most important thing to them and to this group of people is themselves. Now, maybe you're in this congregation and you're in that category. That the most important thing to you is yourself. I've had all kinds of problems with my body, you know that. But I'm just annoyed that it takes me away from the Word. That's my attitude. I've had a lot of healing, more and more healing, but it seems to be just for me. I don't know that how much power I have for anyone else, but. I've had more and more success at praying for myself this past year. And the way I pray is, you've got to stop stopping. You've got to get out of my way, you body you. You've got to get out of my way. I have to translate this chapter. That's what the healings are rising out of. And the, of course, the New Testament says, forget about yourself. But forget about yourself is, is, is a... Uh, a state, a degree of maturity that maybe you haven't arrived at yet. I, I'm not testing any of you, you brethren. You, know, you test yourself. Okay? Have you arrived at that place yet where God is more important to you and He is His Word than something that's hurting your body? Do you, when your body gets sick, are you annoyed? Are you annoyed because it's keeping you from God? If you're not there yet, let me be an example for you. That's how you get healed, brethren, by making God more important than yourself. But you can't do that yourself. Your only opportunity, if you're listening to me, is to confess that you don't have it and ask the Lord to give it to you. That's how you get all your, your prayers answered. He has to be the most important thing in your life. Actually, the scripture says he has to be more important than your life here. Are you faced with death in this world? Well, I rebuke death. I have too much to do here. See, I don't care about you, death. If the Lord lets you take me, he'll let you take me. I'm too busy. Leave me alone. That's what we're supposed to be headed for. I'm not condemning you if you don't have it. Let me be an example unto you. So I'm telling you that I... I have the mind of the Pharisee with the compassion of Christ. I believe I have the compassion of Christ if you get a hold of me. And I've told you this before. Sometimes I don't have compassion on your situation. You have to, Jesus said you have to keep knocking. My head is up here. You've got to get my attention. When you get my attention, I have the compassion of Christ. Okay. I, otherwise I have a tendency to not see it. It just goes in this here and out there. I look at it, you know, you have to get my attention. If you want, if you want to kick in to the power that's in this ministry, which is the power that's in me, you know. If you ask me once and you go away with your tail between your legs because I didn't give you a response that you would hope for because I'm going crazy with the computers today or whatever, I'm, I'm studying for the message or whatever I'm doing, that's your mistake. You don't want to harass me, but you certainly need to pray to the Lord as to, for when, as to when you should approach me again. See? So I have, I have the mind of the Pharisee, you see. And I'm looking at this, what's going on, you know, like this, looking at this Pentecostal meeting, which was fine for a Pentecostal meeting. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, what are they doing? What are they doing? Where is the word? You know? And I can... Not me, but I could just see the Pharisees just turning around and walking away, not wanting anything to do with them. Now, that's what it was like when Jesus came on the scene. Jesus going to the poor, sickly people, begging in the streets, 
the Pharisees didn't want anything to do with them. It's the same thing today. That's the same conditions today. The church is poor and beggarly. But this time, the Lord is raising up someone with his power who will, or some ones, it's for the whole ministry, if you can, if you can enter in, enter in, will also have the compassion of Christ. Jesus had the wisdom of the Pharisees, and he also had the compassion of Christ, and they never saw anything like that in their life. They didn't want anything to do. I think there was actually a couple of scriptures where the Pharisees are saying, well, the, to be in that condition you are, those people are wholly cursed. I'm pretty sure that's a scripture. That man is wholly cursed. I don't want anything to do with him. And I heard all this. I saw all this. I understood. I understood what I may have maybe understood, but not to the degree that I understood it last night. I, what did I understand? The condition of the Israel of God. I saw the problems of the Israel of God. I saw the problems of the Jews. I saw the problems of the church. I saw the problem that the Lord Jesus Christ has to deal with. See, that's, that's the sign of spiritual manhood. And brethren, please do not, do not misunderstand me. If you are not there, okay, if the primary concern of your life is your own health or your own finances or whether or not you're married or not married, or if that's your primary concern, God bless you, God bless you. But you need to know that you're a spiritual woman. See? And you also need to know that spiritual manhood is available to everyone in the church. But becoming a spiritual man means you give up the mindset of the spiritual woman. You can't be a spiritual woman and a spiritual man at the same time. See? So I'm here as an example to you, not to hurt you or make you feel bad. I'm here as an example to you because this church has to grow up. And everyone in this ministry, you have the best opportunity to grow up because you have a pastor that's growing up. As an example for you. So that's what I am. I'm an example to you. Spiritual men talk about the, talk about the things of God, the, the kingdom of God, the family of God, the political situation of the country we're living in. And they deal with their own problems as best they can to not let them interfere with their spiritual manner. So if you want to be a spiritual man, you have to give up being a spiritual woman, you see. I'm not condemning you. I'm not condemning you. It's between you and the Lord, you see. If, he, if you would pr prefer to be a spiritual woman, that was what Lot wanted. He wanted to remain a spiritual woman. See? But it didn't work out too well for him. If the Lord wants you to come higher, then you have a problem. If the Lord says you can stay where you are, then you're okay. I'm just telling you the truth. See? The move of God, the purposes of God, God, okay, is greater than what we see in the churches today. He's greater than what we see here. He's just waiting for us to grow up, to go to the next step. 